you actually have more control over your migraines than you think. It really comes down to what works for you and how better you can adhere to it. Welcome to a new segment of Coaches Corners with Astrid. Migraines and headaches are not a common topic discussed. At least I don't see it very often in the social media. This is why I am here today to discuss with you, as I know many of you out there oftentimes are looking for information and probably you feel like you are a complete stranger because there's nothing that you can find to relate to. So in this video, I will share what has helped me overcome the frequent migraines and how you actually could have more control over your migraines or headaches than you thought you had. Migraines are a neurological condition with multiple symptoms such as intense headaches, like your head is going to really explode, nauseous, and sometimes vomiting. In fact, it is so bad and it can be so debilitating and incapacitating. Women are prone to experience migraines up to three times more than men and also experience more disabling, severe episodes with longer duration. There are multiple factors for migraines, but the actual causes are still yet to be clarified. However, certain comorbidities such as neurologic and psychiatric disorders, chronic pain, hypertension, gastrointestinal issues, allergy, asthma, and even obesity might make migraine symptoms even worse. So. Regardless of the migraine cause, lifestyle modification is very important and is key to the successful management of migraines. Now, I really want to tell you a little bit of my own story because that probably will be more helpful to kind of why I'm doing this in the first place. So I have suffered from migraines since I remember. I would have multiple migraines per month that would leave me pretty much bedridden and that would have affected me for a few days in a row. Same as the hangover feeling you have when you get drunk, although I have gotten drunk like once, but like, you know, you get me. But with that never ending feeling of like, like headiness and the fear that an episode could come back anytime. Like that's how freak you, you get when you have migraines and you actually struggle to controlling that. Regardless of how bad the pain would be from the headaches, sometimes I just had to push through the day and do what I had to do. That's what it is. Sometimes I would beat myself up for not being able to do what I needed to do because of them. And for the most part, I would just wait and wait until I was better and give excuse for why I was not able to do what I needed to do. I was worried that I had a terrible condition that I could never ever overcome. And obviously there is some truth to it. Like there is a component that you might not be able to control at all, but there is definitely something that you can do about it. And you can actually take care of that and get some control back. You know, there are obvious multiple factors that can be triggering and cause migraines. I know that there are some that you can't control, but there are others that you can control. This is how I was able to reduce my migraine frequency, my severity and improve my quality of life. You might be wondering now, Astrid, how did you do it? What do you do? Well, what's special about what you, what you do? About 12 months ago, I started to pay attention and identify all the potential triggers I had control over. I understood that there are obvious causes I was unable to change, but there are others that I actually could. So what I was not able to control, perhaps my genetic predisposition, obviously, certain times of my menstrual cycle, weather, altitude, different environments, situations that you can't control, that are completely out of your, your power or your control. But I realized that I had control over my intake of certain ingredients, certain foods, my stress, anxiety, dehydration, sleep pattern, eating pattern, daily physical activity and movement, muscle tension, especially around my head, my neck, and my upper body, especially after like a very heavy upper body training, or even like working a lot on the computer. That would just be really, really bad. What I did is I started tracking when I had an episode and reflect on my day. I use a journal where I was able to put things down and easily identify what might have gone wrong. I would document it consistently, see how I could start learning to read my body and prevent my migraines. There are a few things that I really want you to take from this. And this is a question I want you to reflect on every time you have experience or you experience a migraine from now on. And this is going to be very powerful because this is going to allow you to have knowledge and the awareness of what is happening with your daily living and daily activities and what are your potential triggers for you? Number one, you have to get your own diary or journal or a calendar or get an app that nowadays exists. Gosh, I, I wish I did know this before, but I did it old school, but you can download 
a app that pretty much asks you a lot of different questions that help you track your migraines. But this is very, very important. But if you want to do it old school, like I did, let's continue to my list. So the number two would be, how has your sleep been? Have you been consistently sleeping with a, a enough time and duration? Is it consistent? Like, are you daily sleeping roughly the same time and the same duration? Is it the same quality? Number three, have you been eating regularly during the day or are you consistently having an adequate eating pattern? Four, how has your hydration been? Five, have you been stressed, anxious, or have you had any daily routine change? Six, has there been any changes in what you eat? Anything out of the ordinary? Or have you taken any pill or any medication that you never had before? Or supplements, perhaps? Have you felt any tightness around your neck or body recently? Or like you feel very sore? Seven, have you been chewing a lot of gum? Probably this is, is going to be you, for you like mind blowing, but if you chew a lot of gum, that could be a cause of headaches. Or if you tense your jaw frequently without noticing. Eight, are you ovulating? Are you close to your day one of your cycle? This can also be a migraine trigger. So I could spend hours talking about migraines, but I want this to be relevant, short and practical. The last point I will add is that migraine preventive treatment is very important. And if you can use it in early stages, that is going to be much more beneficial before it actually develops to get to worse. So if you take a medication in the early stages, well, and you start feeling like things are not, are a little bit off, that's when it is the best time to uh, using the medication your doctor told you to use. So the bottom line here is that if you have noticed that something's off and you're likely to get a headache or a migraine, take your medication as early as possible. To wrap this up, I just want you to let you know that you have control for a, a big chunk of your migraines. Reflect on the questions I just mentioned before, use preventative medications, and I promise you, you will more likely to identify the cause, act quickly and feel good. I hope this video was helpful for many of you. If it was, please make sure you share it, you subscribe to the channel, and you like this video and tag someone who might benefit from this. If you want to follow more of my content and get to know me a little bit more, you can follow me on Instagram, anti-diet underscore dietitian, you'll see it here below, or you can inquire for coaching with me for anything in particular you want to address or work on or have support, I have you covered. So email me to astrid at violane.com and I see you guys in the next episode. Women especially for some reason, we, I think we seem to be like the 